Venezuela Bueno, en esta sesión de cierre de la jornada inaugural de la Asamblea Internacional de los Pueblos, queremos darle la bienvenida a una mujer, like to a una líder de nuestro pueblo, woman, a leader of our hija people. de un insignia revolucionario venezolano, ha sido un canciller de la República, ha sido presidenta de la Asamblea Nacional Constituyente, y hoy es la vicepresidenta ejecutiva de la República. Vamos a presentar también, alternativamente aquí con Silvana, a los compañeros que en el primer lugar, al compañero Kuzma, in the Brasilia, de Zambia, miembro del Partido Socialista 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 de Zambia, Thank you, Africa. Delegación, beautiful delegation. Beautiful, colorful representation of our mother Africa. We're also going to be joined by Margarita Ferrer. She was with us. Uh, she's from Spain, a member of the United Left. She's in charge of programs of political education, a member of the Executive Committee of the European Left left this party and she's also a member of the Transform Margarita. Welcome Margarita. Beautiful words that we heard from Margarita. We also have our dear partner with that whom it would be impossible to be here today in this assembly. Joao Pedro of Brazil. He is the architect, the organizer of the International People's Assembly. Long live Lula, long live Lula free. Free Lula. That is a good chant. We can hear it in Brazil. And we also have Claudia de la Cruz. She also participated in the afternoon session. She is American. She participates in the Popular Education Project, a collective for the organizers and popular movements in the United States. Welcome. Claudia de la Cruz. Thank you, Claudia. También se encuentra por la región de Asia. And from Asia, el compañero de Nepal, we have Balran, our Bantota, compañero de Nepal, para el Comité Central del Partido Comunista de Nepal, miembro de la Comunidad 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 de Nepal, And finally, we have Rayuli from Tunisia, he's a member of the Central Committee of the Labour's Party and one of the founders of this party. He integrates the Popular Front of Tunisia. He was in jail, he was tortured for his struggle against the dictatorship and against imperialism.
Long live the people of Tunisia. Our brothers and sisters from Africa, from Asia, from Latin America, our brothers and sisters from the United States, our brothers and sisters from Europe. Margarita was wondering why are we here. And before giving the floor to the members of the panel to listen to the reflection, we want to watch a video about the International People's Assembly, about this space, this wonderful platform that sows a seed for the construction of international articulation. And today we hold this, we hold this meeting in the Bolivarian Republic of Venezuela. So we're going to watch this video now. Go ahead. Desde hace dos años, movimientos sociales, partidos políticos, entre otras organizaciones populares de diferentes partes del mundo, han venido sumando esfuerzos para la creación de una plataforma política antiimperialista y anticapitalista que haga frente a los desafíos actuales. A través de la articulación política para desarrollar acciones de solidaridad internacional, formación política y comunicación alternativa, más de 400 delegados y delegadas inauguran en Caracas la Asamblea Internacional de los Pueblos en solidaridad con la Revolución Bolivariana y contra el imperialismo. Del 23 al 27 de febrero se debatirán las distintas estrategias de resistencia y lucha de nuestros pueblos frente a la ofensiva imperialista que se cierra sobre Venezuela teniendo como objetivo la construcción de una agenda de lucha y solidaridad común. Por un mundo multicéntrico y pluripolar, y en defensa de la soberanía y la autodeterminación de los pueblos. Muy bien, con este comienzo le cedemos la palabra al compañero Joao well. Pedro Estéreo. Muy bien, le cedemos la palabra a nuestro compañero Joao Pedro Estéreo. Compañera Delcy Rodríguez. Dear Delcy Rodríguez, our Vice President, not only of the Venezuelan people, but also of the Latin American people and everyone around the world. Bienvenida a nuestra Asamblea. Welcome to our Assembly. Que ya empezamos como tú has acompañado cuando estabas ahí en la Cancillería When you were in the Foreign Affairs Ministry, you saw the workings of this assembly. And I can tell you that from the very beginning, she supported this idea. She always fostered this idea in order to make it a reality. Y aquí estamos, compañera. So here we are. 400 delegados, 400 delegados de 85 from 85 countries. De cinco continentes. Five continents. Y llegaron antes para ver si había clima de seguridad. And they were here early to see if there was a safety zone. 170 young people from several countries. We are here, as Margarita asked in her presentation or said, not only to participate in another meeting, we are here to share or to offer our hearts, as the poets say, with the Venezuelan people and to tell you out loud that we are all Venezuelans. And we're not here to just say that, yes, we were in Venezuela, and that's it. We are here to take upon a commitment. Christians use that expression, that word, commitment very much. Although sometimes we sin 
So today we started our assembly. We are analyzing the context, capitalism, the correlation of strengths. And we have to understand why Venezuela is attacked. It is not due to the lies that they spread around, that there is no democracy, etc. We all know, and we have reflected upon this since this morning, if Venezuela did not have oil, it would not be attacked. If you weren't a brave people that faced every difficulty during the past 20 years, they would not be here in the border. So we have to analyze this in order to understand because this isn't only an ideological campaign or only for solidarity. It is about understanding the steps, the, me the measures taken by our enemies, the imperialists, the United States. Tomorrow, we are going to work together all day long, so everyone is going to participate and expose their ideas. We are going to have workshops in which we're going to discuss and assume the commitments that we have everything we can do in our countries and at an international level to join the Venezuelan people in this struggle against North American imperialism. So tomorrow will be a very detailed work day. We want to live here with an action plan then, on Tuesday, we are going to follow the example of young people and we're going to spend the day in the communities with the Venezuelan people to exchange ideas, to know about the reality, to see the truth, as Erika said this morning. We only want to know the reality. We are not going to fool anyone. And then, on the final day, we're going to have a plenary session to synthesize everything. And then we will assume the commitments. And in the afternoon, we will have another march that the Venezuelan people is very used to doing to face its enemies and the internal struggle. So, dear Delcy, we are here, we are with you, as a Brazilian, and on behalf of our delegation that is present here, I would also like to say that I bring greetings from Lula to you and to our president, uh, Nicolas Maduro. Lula Libre! Lula Libre! Lula Libre! Lula, thank you very much. Lula is in jail for the same reason that they now want to pursue a war with you. Because he was the symbol of popular struggle in Brazil. He is our popular leader that brings together the masses. So Lula is not actually in jail. Lula is kidnapped, not by the military people. Lula has been kidnapped by international big money because they needed to remove the Brazilian process in order to take the oil that we have in our country. Well, I conclude with the Brazilian part. I was saying that we are here to assume a commitment as Brazilians and as Colombians we will be at the border defending the interests of the Latin American people. We are sure that the Brazilian army and the Colombian army 
de hacer una invasión militar por un único motivo no tiene Venezuela razón por a single reason. y ningún ejército no reason puede moverse si no tiene razón So no army shall invade if there is no reason to do it. Sí But the Bolivarian de army of Venezuela has a reason to defend its self-determination, its oil, es and its own. No that is why we are convinced that there's, there will not be war, even if the Americans have already declared it. So those who are near Venezuela are going to do everything in their power To prevent a war Luego, in our country. Vamos a el Then we are going to take up the commitment. Cada quien de Each one of us coming país, back to our countries should become a little Rodriguez Nicolas Maduro or Adelcy Rodriguez to organize our people, to organize protests and defend our country. And as you all have said, As you all understand, here we are fighting the battle of the century for all the peoples of the world. If the empire defeats Venezuela, it will be defeating the working class for many, many years, as they did in the, Sp in the Spanish Civil War in 1936. So here we are in the new battles. Pero, like the one that was saben, fought in the Spanish Civil War. Aquí, But as you also said, ganar, we're going to win. Y si ganamos, se abre And una if we win, coyuntura, we will have a new space, a new relation of forces. If we win the Latin America, with the example of Venezuela, we will move forward, we will change our society, and we will build a new society. Viva el pueblo de Venezuela! Long live the Venezuelan people! Long live all the peoples of the world! Thank you. 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 United people will never be defeated. They shall not pass. Thank you, Joao Pedro, the great creator of this idea. Thank you. Now we're going to give the floor to two women, also representatives, spokespeople of this great movement. One of the lines of thinking of the International People's Assembly is to claim gender equality. So now we're going to give the floor to these two women. Margarita Ferrer. She is from Spain, although she was born in Buenos Aires, and she is a representative of the United Left Movement and a member of the European Leftist Party. She's also in the network of Critical Foundation, Critical Thinking Foundation. Welcome again, Margarita. Just a brief comments. As I was saying, for a continent that is suffering media intoxication in such a terrible way as Europe, we need to talk about fake news. Why do we live in the century of fake news? Why does the far right and all its money, all its potential networks and the neo-fascists that work for them through Steve Bannon are creating that network of lies around the world. And what is their goal? Because I was asking myself, it cannot be possible that they want to lie only to deceive and to hide the truth. Of course, that is one of the objectives of a lie, to hide the truth. But I want to share with you that I think that is not the main objective. I think the objective of fake news such as those said about Venezuela in Europe every single day, is for people to not mobilize. The goal of fake news is for people to not commit. It is an even more perverse objective than the fact of hiding a truth or a reality. In Spain, even if we talk, uh, speak the same language, we don't see the 
protests supporting the government. Of course, if the opposition speaks, they are in every single paper. So I was saying, this is not the objective that they want. They want people to not commit. So what can we do against fake news, against that fake world that is being created by capitalism? I think that the only way is to study, is to fight this with knowledge, to defend the truth, to defend reason, to defend scientific knowledge, reading, reflection, dialogue, learning with other people. The only way to defeat lies is to study the truth. So I encourage you to do this, and I share with the Delsi the great work that we're doing with popular education and the need we have to train our people. Thank you. Thank you, Margarita. Now we give the floor to Claudia de la Cruz from the United States. She is still also here with us today. Thank you very much. Thank you for the love and the solidarity that Venezuela has expressed. I am from the south of the Bronx in the United States, the poorest district in the whole of the United States. In 2005, President Chavez went there and he extended his solidarity with the poorest people to those invisible in the United States. And of course, love is paid with love, and friends are known in difficult times. So we are here as a people. We are here with Venezuela. We are with the only right president of this country, who is Nicolás Maduro. The United States is divided in two. The people and the governments led year after year by people with an agenda against the others. And we're here to say this is enough. And we're going to continue to walk with the people of Venezuela, with the people of Cuba, with the people of Nicaragua, and with every revolution rising in this world, because there are re revolutionaries in the empire. And if it can, it can make a little dent to defeat all the evilness, you can be sure that we are going to do it. Thank you very much. From the poorest, from the immigrants, from women, from the indigenous people that are resistant and our building maybe not socialism yet, but they are progressing in the struggle for life. Thank you. Thank you very much, Claudia. Thank you to all the women present here today, young women, peasant women, indigenous women, the members of unions, Noel Hipocaterra, our indigenous mother, greetings Noel, she's a representative of our Aboriginal people. Also greetings to many people that are here today, the presence of the Intellectual Network in Defense of Humanity, Tilio Boron, Ramon Rafogel, so many people. The Minister of Culture, Ernesto Villegas, is also here with us. In the 70s, we saw the brutal assassination by the police of that regime, one of the most brilliant leaders of the Venezuelan left, Jorge Rodriguez. He died very young, 
brutalmente asesinado was brutally murdered en las de la policía política. in the cells of Dejó political embargo, police. Su siembra humana. However, he left Dejó his human seeds lucha, and he left us his example y of struggle and commitment. I remember that I was a student. I was only starting high school. And on the streets, we were singing a chant that he taught us. Socialism is conquered fighting. Socialism is Organized people will conquer power. Socialism, the organized power, did conquer the power. So I want to give the floor to the daughter of Jorge Rodriguez. He is now one of the most important leaders of the Bolivarian Revolution, Vice President of the Republic. Nothing will stop Yo quiero this desde acá, assembly. En este domingo, caraqueño, enviar un abrazo a nuestros today hermanos de Cuba like que hoy están ratificando su nueva constitución para la causa de la consolidación del modelo socialista. Un fuerte abrazo, Cuba, hermanos, hermanas. Greetings to our brothers and sisters from Cuba. Del camino de Fidel, de ratifying the path of Fidel Castro, of our commander Fidel. Enlightened by the star of Che Guevara, walking the path of Jose Martí. Greetings to the President Diaz Canel, to Commander Raul Castro Ruz, and to our brothers and sisters of Cuba. I wish you the best on this path to perpetuate dignity and the defense of dignity of the people of Cuba. So, first of all, I want to send regards from President Nicolás Maduro. He will be with you in two days. And also, I would like to thank you to thank the free peoples of the world. I remember that two years ago, I was talking to Pedro, and he brought this project to President Nicolás Maduro, and he said, this is approved, execute this immediately, and it ha he has no stop, and this is the result. We have the birth of the new anti-imperialist platform for the peoples of the world for the defense of freedom, for the defense of independence. I'd also like to greet our friends in the panel and all of our guests. I know you are 443 international guests from every continent in such a very important time from the homeland of Simon Bolivar. Today in Venezuela, as you know, and that is why this is so relevant, this international in Venezuela, we la have at stake freedom, independence, and dignity of this country. De you are here in a moment of struggle países, for, for America, our country, for America, for and for all the peoples of the world that defend their right to be free, to be sovereign, and to be independent. You know that since Commander Chavez in 1998 took office and gave the power to the people, North American imperialism, Yankee imperialism created a strategy of counter-revolution. What we are living today did not generate spontaneously. It has been worked on, it has been prepared for many years. And in 2012, they thought that by killing President Chavez, the revolution would die. But the Venezuelan people rose on its grip and they said, we continue with the Venezuelan revolution, with our cry, with the absence of our leader, Hugo Chavez, we will continue to fight. And that is what we did. So we went to a historical election in which the Venezuelan people heard the call of Commander Chavez who said, elect Nicolás Maduro. 
That is what we did as a people. We ratified the Bolivarian Revolution, its continuity, with all the difficulties that it has had. But we elected our president, Nicolás Maduro Moros. Imperialism knew that the strategy of counter-revolution had to be stronger because the winds of socialism were rolling all around the continent. Imperialism knew that this giant mass called Bolivarian Revolution could not continue to grow in the historical legacy of our liberators completely opposed to expansionism and to terrorism and to American imperialism. And so we started a new period of our revolution. At that time, President Nicolás Maduro would tell us that there was an economic war. And I have to be honest, because the president has said, has said this before. And the ministers didn't really understand what the economic war was about. But the president knew that the economic war was the way to asphyxiate the economy and to defeat the Bolivarian Revolution and to defeat the model of Bolivarian socialism deeply recognized in international scenarios as a model for social inclusion, for social equality, as a model for social justice that brought hundreds of thousands of excluded people in Venezuela and said to them, take this political power and let us progress through real economic independence. Let's break the chains that tie us to imperialism and capitalism in the world. That was the legacy of Hugo Chavez that we have to preserve forever in order to exist as a people. But the far right of Venezuela does not like to be called a people, but long live the peoples of the world, because that is what we are in our identity as human beings. We work for equality and we practice equality. And so we live a very hard moment in our revolution. I repeat, in the spiritual, we suffered the loss of Commander Hugo Chavez. They thought, and they knew that this is true, that by killing him, they would destroy the revolution. But as I said, the people took his grief put it aside and worked in the Bolivarian Revolution peacefully through elections as stated in our Constitution. And so they decided a new strategy for Venezuela. I remember Atilio in 2015 when on March 9th, Barack Hussein Obama find uh, the infamous decree saying that Venezuela is a threat for the safety of the United States of America and it was a threat for a foreign policy. And we knew the danger that this implied. We knew that this doctrine was based on categorizing governments that are not aligned with their interests governments that do not give up on their, upon their mandates. So we knew that this was a seed of an armed intervention against Venezuela. Months after this, on October 2015, the head of the Southern Command of the Pentagon stated that if in Venezuela there was a humanitarian crisis, the United States of America would in intervene in this country, would stage military intervention, and would work with members of the region and Europe to build this hoax to justify the intervention. That lie, that hoax is called human
humanitarian crisis. That was the way they found to justify international intervention against Venezuela. This was in 2015. They started with economic asphyxiation against Venezuela to attack a model that was saying to capitalism around the world that there is another way to be happy for our people to be happy that we organize movements, the peasants, youth, students, all of the social movements could be at the head to direct their destiny, their path. But it was a very dangerous model for them. So that's why the motto that socialism is conquered by fighting until defeat is more valid than ever. Socialism is not going to drop from the sky. Nobody is going to give us socialism. We have to fight for it. We have to struggle. And we have to build it every minute of our existence. You knew, they knew that Bolivarian socialism inspired in the Agostura speech of our liberator was one of the most serious dangers for the capitalist model. That model reminds them every single day that capitalism is profoundly unfair, profoundly violent, that the only way to maintain it is imperial wars with their military, media, and gun industry. Since then, they started escalating the criminal blockade against our country. In the recent months, it has reached a scandalous situation where they are literally stealing the assets of the Bolivarian Republic. They are blocked our accounts in other countries. Europe says that they don't have anything to do with it, that it's only the banks. But those banks are in their countries, so I ask them, are you ruled by banks? But that's true. In capitalism, financial power is the ruler. There is no state that can face this financial power. And that is why they want to do this to Venezuela, because we have faced the bank, we have faced the power, and we say we will not surrender. And if we lose our lives by fighting, we know that we will vanquished. As our heroes, as our forefathers did, they are claimed for their petitions for a country with freedom, for a country with a dignified people, as it has happened with the Bolivarian Revolution. And I was saying that the Obama decree was and is very dangerous. The Obama decree fell into the hands of white supremacy that are in the White House today. And they immediately followed it. And we are seeing this. President Nicolás Maduro said time and time again that they want the oil in our country and that they will not stop to obtain it. Recently, we saw the publication of a book from an FBI former employee, and he said that he was surprised when Donald Trump said, we need to have war, pursue war in Venezuela, they have oil. He says, they are in our back door, not even backyard, back door. So he said that he needed a war in Venezuela to ensure oil. So all of the ho hoaxes, all of the lies, saying that they needed to restore democracy in Venezuela, that they needed to restore freedom in Venezuela, have fallen apart. They have shown their true face. They say, we want oil and we will take him by force. But that will not happen. 
that will not happen. Because we have a people, indestructible, brave people, to defend our country, to defend our legitimate rights. This week, I have met with Americans and Europeans who have visited our country. Some of them have good intentions, some of them not so good. But all of them have the same speech. We need to carry out elections. They say that we need to infringe our constitution. We held elections on May 2018 and the people decided that Nicolás Maduro should stay as president of Venezuela, at the head of the Bolivarian Revolution. But there is more. In the last 12 months, Joao, we held here five elections. In the last 20 years, we held 25 elections. As President Lula said, the problem of Venezuela is that they hold too many elections. Long live President Lula. Long live Lula free. And yes, it's true. Because they needed to show the world that we were ratifying the peaceful path of our revolution. And in the last 12 months that we held five elections, the Venezuelan opposition feared to count themselves. So I say that elections are not the problem. I think the problem is the political and ideological intolerance to the Bolivarian socialism model represented by President Nicolás Maduro. The problem is the hatred of big money that we have a president coming from the union movement a president that is a worker, that is at the head of the destiny of the highest energy reserves of our planet. So that is the hatred and the despise for this class, for the working class expressed in this aggression against our country. So the problem is not elections. The problem is that they will never recognize a result in which the Venezuelan people is still ruling. They want their puppets to take their orders and to give away all of the oil. That is what they want. But there will be no tolerance for an electoral result in which the Bolivarian Revolution will not govern. There will not be tolerance. That's why we have a group of failures in the OAS. I always remember this. It gives me pleasure to remember those who are in the group of Lima. In a general, in a general assembly of the OAS, the most servile person that you can think of, Luis Almagro, wanted to pass a resolution against our country, but we defeated him. I still remember that day. We knocked him out. He was pale as he was yesterday in Cúcuta. He had the same defeated face. And so I remember that the countries of the group that was defeated left to a hall to create their own declaration of the losers because they also have the right to express themselves. They are a minority, but they also have the right to express themselves. So they issued a, a declaration and they were born as the Lima group, but they were born from a failure. And they will continue to be a failure in each of their aggressions against Venezuela. In the diplomatic field, they are infringing the Charter of the United Nations, Nations of the OAS of every rule of international law. But they created a coalition against Venezuela 
a dangerous coalition. And tomorrow we will see why I'm saying that this is a dangerous coalition. At the head of this group of losers, we have the United States of North America, and then we have the group of satellite governments who have accumulated and taken by force through coup d'etats in Brazil, in Honduras, taken by force the government of our homeland to be against Venezuela. So they said, we are the instrument to tell the world that the region is against Venezuela. But the group of Lima is a failure. As you are planning a military aggression against Venezuela, the peoples of the world will be here saying that we will continue to be free to work for independence and for sovereignty. So that evil coalition of hatred and tolerance, bigotry and fascism, well, yesterday, what we saw yesterday was something else. And President Canel was right to say those presidents that they were clones. I had never seen something like that. I received messages from all over the world to tell me how is it possible, what are they doing there? They did, don't have anything else to do in their own countries, they didn't have to take care of the problems they have in their own countries. And I said they have a lot of problems actually, but they have one single task that Trump gave them to overturn the Bolivarian revolution. And they do not know that we are at Nantan, that uh, this revolution rose up on the social struggles of our of original peoples and that it was possible thanks to the blood of each one of our peasantry, peasant movement, on the forces of our working class and on the indestructible spirit of our youth. They do not know what they're talking about. And those clowns went to the border, to the Colombian border with Venezuela, and they put up a whole show there. It was indeed a very dangerous day, we must say. And uh, from here, I want you, I want to ask you a round of applause for all those Venezuelans that are keeping our sovereignty in our borders, that are defending our sovereignty, uh, what surprise our military, our youth that said, I want to be there. I want to be right there defending Venezuela. The organized power did conquer the power. So I want to give the floor to the daughter of Jorge Rodriguez. He is now one of the most important leaders of the Bolivarian Revolution, Vice President of the Republic. This mic is angry at me. Good afternoon to all of you. First of all, Yesterday, we were uh, a little bit happy that, well, to see how the Guarimberos went to Colombia. They started uh, fires in Colombia. It was kind of funny because uh, they were defeated by the epic battle that Venezuela waged yesterday and that they went to see all of the destruction that the Guarimberos, that the rioters had caused in Colombia. You gotta be stupid to just put your face, to put up a face and say, here I am to, to check out what is going on. So, yeah, I, I think it's a very bad uh, theater uh, piece with very bad actors. 
And yesterday they were mad at us because we told them the truth right at their faces. But we are profoundly happy to know that nothing stops the Venezuelan people in their defense of the, our sovereignty, our sacred right to peace. I'd like to convey a message to a group of Venezuelans who are adversing the Venezuelan revolution, but that in 2017 voted for the Constituent National Assembly and voted for peace. We are summoning them again to the national unity to raise awareness because an intervention in our country will be madness. The United Nations just published some figures according to which last year there has been an increase of 52% compared to the previous year as the numbers of civil victims that were caused in the wake of military intervention. And out of that 52%, 68% of them were women and children. So that's capitalism. The selective murdering against children and women. So this is why President Nicolás Maduro has said very clear now, like our father, to say with all that love that he has for Venezuela, they will not prevail, they will not get into our home, they will not get through. He has the supreme responsibility to defend our right to peace, to future, and uh, the right that we have to have our own homeland. This was the message he delivered yesterday. And we know, Joao Pedro, I know that your words are very wise and true. We know that if they did to put a finger on Venezuela, the peoples of this continent and of the world will rise and say to the Yankee imperialism, get out of Venezuela. We are going to be relentless. We are going to put them in hell if we have to. I know this is true. I know this is our identity that unites us. They can be sure that if they dare put their finger on Venezuela, they're going to have a very bad time. And uh, those who will support such a crazy thing, well, they will always feel guilty because of the huge mistake they would be making. We saw what happened in Libya and Iraq after millions of deaths. That is accountable for that massacre, for that craziness, and started to say, oh, uh, we're sorry, we were wrong. We were not uh, arms of mass destruction in Iraq. And today, Marco Rubio is threatening us. This liar is threatening us, threatening us. He's a criminal. And the world must know that he is threatening us, and it is a real threat, actually. And he says it. You know, he says, we're going to kill you. No, Rubio, you know what? We're not afraid. And we repeat it all the time. We are not afraid. But, uh, but we're not afraid, but we are full of energy, of joy, of to guarantee Venezuelan peace and Venezuela's future. President Maduro has also said, hey, Trump, your hands will be soiled with the blood of our people if you dare to do this madness. And he has said also that we are open to respectful dialogue, that we are ready to tackle whatever we need to tackle, the no open agenda, no conditions whatsoever. And he has said so to the Venezuelan opposition all the time. And when they, he calls to the United States uh, embassy, they say, no, you cannot 
Todd, you have to continue with your show. And that's it. This is what is really happening, unfortunately. But so we will never surrender because if there is something that we have is our tolerance, our democratic values. We respect diversity. We respect those who don't think like us. Is a human right. Diversity is a human right. We respect. Respect is a human right as well. To tolerate the, 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 the one that's different is a human right. And the main breaches of uh, human rights are the American imperialists. Let us remember the number of bombs they have dropped all around the world. And we would like to convey our solidarity with the Palestinian people. It's a dignified people that never surrenders, never yields in the defense of their rights. They have been historical victims of imperialism, Zionism. So, in closing, let me thank you for your presence here. And allow me to convey the greetings, very warm greetings of our president, because you are accompanying us in a very difficult time, this decisive time for our existence as a people, and this decisive hour where our homeland is calling upon all of us with the same solidarity based spirit and internationalism spirit together and allow me to also greet the international brigade together who has we have been going around our country for the last 10 days so that spirit is accompanying the Bolivarian revolution so it has been an honor for me to participate here two years later in the international, the People's International Assembly, which is an extraordinary platform for articulation of all the movements of grassroots in the world in one single anti-imperialist platform in favor of life and future. Thank you very much, dear comrades.